Hello everyone, my name is Tux Alba and welcome back to the Lovecraftian video game retrospective and welcome to Infra Arcana, Lovecraftian roguelike. This game here is what you for the most part would expect from a roguelike. You have a single character, your character is rather fragile, you've got resources to manage, primarily your health and your sanity with regard to your character. And there's also a plethora of items to find and manage such as weapons, scrolls, medical supplies, flares, and other supplies. And your main objective is to descend through the different levels of a dungeon. And oftentimes you have to make the decision whether you want to explore more, risk running into more monsters, but potentially also finding more supplies and leveling up through gaining experience by combat, or whether you want to play it safe, just dash for the exit, probably miss out on stuff but maybe stay a little bit safer and conserve health which you might need further down on your journey. The game offers four different character classes. You've got the veteran who's focused on combat and is a little bit tougher than the rest. You've got the rogue who's focused on sneaking and is maybe a little bit more suitable for just sneaking through the levels instead of exploring everything and trying to kill all the enemies. There's also the cultist who is more magic focused as well as the ghoul, who's a little bit of an oddball slash special class. The ghoul has a couple of quirks. He cannot regain hit points the usual way, but can regain them by eating fallen enemies. And to me, the, rogue, uh, the ghoul, not the rogue, felt a little bit like a mix between the veteran and the rogue. And there's also a couple of traits. You, can, you have starting traits, you can also choose an additional trait, and you gain more through leveling up. So in addition to having four classes, you can also focus your character a little bit. You can make your character more sneaky, you can focus on ranged weapons, make your character tougher or harder to hit, stuff like that. So there's a fair amount of character options here. And on different playthroughs, you can take out different strategies. So the game has a fair amount of replay value. With regard to graphics, the game isn't terribly complicated. It has the usual very simple rogue art style, very few animations, your main character is mostly just a bunch of pixels. But if you like roguelikes, you're probably used to this style anyway. And it is quite fitting because this game is horror themed after all, and the general dark graphics and the simplicity add to a feeling of isolation and loneliness, which is quite nice. With regard to sounds and music, there isn't really all that much there. Some sounds, they do the job, but don't really expect anything glorious here. The game is, depending on how you look at it, rather short, but you're probably going to need a lot of tries to get through it. In fact, I was unable to finish it. The lowest dungeon level I could ever reach was about level 12 or 13, which turned out to be quite difficult. And I found myself, especially on later levels, running away from monsters and just dashing for the exit as opposed to actually fighting them, which you could do on the earlier levels. I'm not quite sure that's the best strategy because as I said before I was actually unable to finish the game at all. But I'm not a roguelike expert, but be warned that if you want to finish this game you are probably going to need quite a bit of patience, but I found the game relatively rewarding while well, if your character is dead, he or she is dead, but at the same time you had the feeling I was gaining experience th throughout all my playthroughs, or failed playthroughs rather, and I did get to know the game's monsters, mechanics, what different items did and what traits were more suitable for what builds and what strategy to approach the game with. And while it can be a little bit random and unforgiving at times, that's also a feature of roguelikes. And it's essentially what you expect if you play a game of the genre. And the whole Lovecraftian stuff is in the magic, insanity and the themed enemies such as cultists. They add to this and it also gets more and more Lovecraftian the deeper you go through the dungeon, which is what you would expect. So if you like roguelikes, this is definitely for you, but be advised that you're in for a challenge. Even compared to a couple of other roguelikes I've played, this game was quite difficult. And if you're not a fan, I'm afraid even the Lovecraftian theme is not going to convince you. But the game is free, and it's so simple that it should run on pretty much any system. So I'm going to give you a link and you can feel free to try it out. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Take care and goodbye.